Freedom, as some of you are aware, we are currently looking for directors for this hub and others, which means that you have the opportunity to pitch shows that you think would fit the format that we're looking for. If you're not quite sure what format we're looking for, if you check that eye, you should be able to check out a video that explains what we're looking for. And this is the first in what may become a longer series of me going through some of the submissions and letting you know why they do or do not work. Um, just a disclaimer, this might be a little bit mean in some parts, but keep in mind, this is of course, you know, it is constructive criticism. That's how I mean it, and I hope that, you know, all the participants will take it that way. Uh, they'll also have links in the description if you want to check them out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right on into this. <laughs> I'm nervous. The first pilot that we'll be looking at in this series is one from Kaiser Hertzen, which is actually someone in the community that I do have respect for. He's been in the community for quite some time, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go easy on him. Just saying. Let's go ahead and roll a clip. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, grenadier and random viewer. Uh, the very first thing that I notice is, of course, you greet your audience with something branded and unique. But at about five seconds, you do have kind of an awkward pause. This can be fixed with a jump cut or by simply re-recording that particular bit and moving forward from there. Thanks for joining me on this video of Let's Talk History Quickies. Moving ahead a few seconds, at about seven seconds, I see the first major gaffe, especially when it comes to a pilot. Your head is cut off. It looks like you're using chroma key or green screen as some people know it and your head is cut off, which means that the camera angle is uh, in such a way that um, you know, you're just not getting all of yourself, especially as you move back and forth and up and down. Uh, this is a mark of being a little bit nervous in front of the camera. Uh, then again, of course, there is some natural movement at all times, of course, but you should compensate for this. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. And the topic of this video is Quotes that tempted fate. The first story is about a passenger. He's about to be a passenger aboard a ship. At 16 seconds of this video, you make another gaffe. Now, this is something that lets me know that the video was not scripted or maybe not scripted well enough. When you say that this is about a passenger who was a passenger, this line probably should have been a gentleman who was a passenger or a person who was a passenger. Of course, this isn't a huge deal breaker because as many of you are aware, I am, you know, prone to a couple of on-screen mistakes myself. However, for a pilot, this is definitely when you want to put your best foot forward. This is when you want to make sure that everything comes across as you intended to with the inflection you intended to. And of course, you know, that the delivery lands. Unfortunately, on-screen errors like this is gonna make sure that the person watching or reviewing it doesn't necessarily connect the way you're looking for. And that's not true with just a pilot. That's true with anything you do here on YouTube. Um, that's not to mean that this kind of thing isn't okay for a vlog or maybe for a Let's Play, but for something where you're trying to do polished, hosted content, definitely something you want to avoid. And before he boards, he says, not even God can sink this ship. Well, that passenger happened to be one of the passengers aboard the HMS Titanic. The second story takes... At approximately 30 seconds, you end your story about the HMS Titanic, and you missed a really great opportunity to use not just what you said, but how you say it to make your point. You said that this person happened to be a passenger on the HMS Titanic. You moved directly on to the next thing. As far as pacing goes, that's actually a good thing. However, as far as letting it sink into an audience, occasionally it is a lot more valuable to pause or to stress a syllable so that they let it sink in. So for instance, if I were to deliver this line, and this gentleman happened to be a passenger on the HMS Titanic. Whereas of course that is very much a me thing to do, it's also recommended if you're going to let something sink in, stress the syllables that you want to stress to get the points across that you want to get across. It takes place during the American Civil War. An officer is riding his horse into a battle, and his sergeant goes, 
Sir, will you please get down from the h horse? There are sharpshooters around here. To which the general replies, huh, The enemy, they couldn't hit an elephant at this range. Moments later, he was shot and killed by a sharpshooter. Your second anecdote deals with a man riding a horse during battle. And this, I feel, does fall a little bit flat. Uh, I, I really feel that if you would have maybe given a little bit more detail about the battle, about the day, that this really would have been driven home a little bit more. Now, that's not to mean that you should make it not so much of a quickie. I just believe that if you would have scripted it a little bit better, you would have probably found a way to let the viewer feel a little bit more invested in this story. Uh, if there's a moral to this story, it's never tempt fate. And these are actually historical phrases and quotes that actually happen. I've noticed several times during this video you seem to look off camera, and you may be checking notes, however, I would actually prefer as a presenter if you were to do something riddled with jump cuts where you actually looked into the lens than something where you were looking off camera and not making eye contact with your audience. Not only that, but you also ended it somewhere around a minute and two seconds and said something along the lines of these are phrases and sayings and things that actually happened. This is something that the audience should automatically assume, seeing as you're talking about historical quickies. My advice, as far as this, is to find some scripted way to do this, because it kind of seems like you're just winging it, which is, for some content, a good thing to do. Other content, like this, something where you're supposed to be an authority, eh, maybe not. So, thank you for joining me on this episode of Let's Talk History Quickies, and I will hope to see you in the next one soon. Thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by, happy learning, and I'll see you next time. One of the things to keep in mind about this exercise is the fact that we're not necessarily looking for someone who's going to put themselves on screen. Though, those who do, it's appreciated, because we're looking for people who can connect on an emotional level. Often, having something on screen where you can read somebody's body language, facial expressions, and that kind of thing is very valuable. But also, while doing that, making sure that you use the most of those facial expressions, those body languages, that was kind of creepy, is very important. So Kaiser, though I do think that you are a very talented person, I have to say that this pilot was denied for many of the reasons that I've already put. Hopefully you've taken this as a constructive criticism. If you'd like to see more of this series, let us know in the comment section down below and we'll explain more about what we're looking for and, of course, why some of these things were either accepted or denied. If you'd like to check out Kaiser Hertzen, link in the description where you can find his channel. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make me love my job. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. Bye, Freedom Family.